News represented. Pretty unprecedented meeting we pulled together in two days. When is uh, the president like going to have this next press conference? Soon, but he's just got action-packed days filled with meetings. I mean, these, these days are overscheduled with meetings. We have people flying in from all over the country meeting with him to give their advice, their counsel, share their experiences, their vision for the country, some of which will result in appointments to his administration and some who just wish to be helpful. Very excited to have new leadership in the, company, in the country and want to be part of that. A lot of common ground. I think that they both, uh, hi, they both understood the country very well. Uh, Tulsi, Gabbert, Representative Gabbert, went against her party quite boldly early on. Uh, and I think that you're hearing people like Representative Tim Ryan of Ohio also raising concerns. Bernie Sanders today was quoted as saying that he, he thinks that they should um, stop with identity politics in the Democratic Party. Whoa, he can call, we'll tell him how to do that and win. So I think there's a recognition that there's a big country out there with lots of voters that feel disaffected from their party, the Democrats. No, there's no need to mend fences. It was an off the record meeting. It was very cordial very productive, a genial, but it was also very candid and very honest. I mean, from my own perspective, it's great to hit the reset button. It was a long, hard-fought campaign. Donald Trump proved that he animated America, he understood America, and now he will be president to all Americans. When do we anticipate the next round of announcements? It could come this week, it could come today, but we're not in a rush to published names just because everybody is looking for the next story respectfully. Got to get it right. We know that we're ahead of schedule from previous, when you compare to previous administrations in formation, previous president, presidents elect. Does the president elect feel like, does he feel like he needs to address the concerns of many Americans who are fearful about hate crimes, um, racist attacks against people who were not Trump supporters? And he has it's, addressed it. He's addressed it, he's addressed it many times. Same question, different week. He's addressed it many times. He's told people to cut it out. He said that on 60 Minutes in front of 32 million people. And, and he has said he'll be the president of all Americans. But I, I honestly respectfully think that we can use your help in that. The election is over. A lot of Americans are having a hard time, quote, accepting the results of the election to coin a phrase that was presumed to be said about Trump supporters before the election results were in. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us, the Trump team, certainly the press, and others, the Democratic Party, to follow President Obama's lead, to follow Vice President, uh, Vice President Biden's lead, and others in telling Americans that this is your president, this is your, this is your Vice President-elect. Respect them and learn to work with them. Kellyanne, Kellyanne how long is... Is there a question in there? Oh, I missed it. I'm here. I know it's not as exciting, but I'm speaking to you. Well, he's up there. He works. The man works 18 hours a day interviewing people, taking calls from across the world. And he will have a press conference in due course, and he will make his announcements for his cabinet. But I think in the meantime, it would be a great idea in the spirit of Thanksgiving. I attended Mass with the President-elect and the Vice President-elect yesterday in New Jersey, and the sermon was about having a grateful heart and meaning thank you and coming together. I think it's a great theme, and we need your help doing that because I think some people are still in election mode and the election is over. Billy, how long is there some be reports that Mr. Trump continues to transact business while he conducts the transition? Is that appropriate? And is, is that an appropriate use of his time? And are you confident that he is not breaking any laws? I'm very confident he's not breaking any laws. He has many lawyers, accountants, and advisors who tell him what he must do and what he can't do. And he's a bit, he's a businessman. He is also working a transition. He's the president elect. And you know, we're in unprecedented times. We have someone who How long is, is he very successful. Florida? Pardon? How long is he going to continue to do both, be president elect and run his own I mean, he's not, it's not like he's, did you ask people how long are you going to play golf and do the transition or how long are you going to, are you suggesting that he's doing something illegal? I'm asking you. I think, and I already said he's not, but the presumption is that he is. So if you operate from, if you operate from a presumption of negativity and illegality, it's going to be, a, you know, a tougher way to answer the question because you're, op it sounds like you're operating from the presumption that he's doing something wrong. Not that I'm aware of. I don't believe that they've spoken today. How did the two gentlemen conduct the meeting over the weekend? Was there an issue at all with the main calling? That was not addressed. 
Uh, they both recognized that they had a rough and tumble campaign. I mean, a week before that, President-elect Trump had great practice in meeting with President Obama, and they had exchanged uh, barbs on the campaign trail days earlier. And I think that everybody agrees that they love this country and they want to help with the peaceful transition into the next administration, which will be President Trump's administration. How long does elect together his cabinet choices? How much are you thinking about diversity, gender, race, uh, religion, sexual orientation? And backgrounds, yes, and experience. Um, he is. If you're talking about just uh, diversity, he's met with uh, women and people of color this past weekend. We've had, he's met with them here, he's met with them in Bedminster. I've been president at both of those. And we're really, just very heartened and very touched by the number of people and diversity including people from across the aisle people who are traditionally more democratic and progressive coming together and wanting to offer him advice perhaps buy for a spot in his cabinet but willing to give him counsel and willing to share experiences and have candid conversations about their views and their backgrounds his nominees so far have been all white men his nominees so far have been all qualified to do the job they're being asked to do. So that's criterion number, well it's said, it's said routinely, it's being typed right now somewhere, but it's in addition to that, or apart from that I should say, uh, the first criterion of course, Phil, is that everybody be qualified and capable to do the job on day one that they're being asked to do. Uh, secondly, they support his, his agenda, which he's been very straightforward about the first 100 days. And thirdly, that, uh, that they represent um, his, his policy that they represent America and, and he is interviewing many different people but you can't sacrifice the first criteria criterion for the other ones but I, I was there when we we're talking to Bob Woodson and Ken Blackwell and Bob Johnson of BET and T.W. Shannon the Speaker of the House in Oklahoma Kathy McGurris Rogers the highest ranking woman in the House of Representatives for many years now mother of three good trivia first woman to give birth three times while in Congress you'll, you'll win the trivia contest next time uh, we talked to, he said, with Governor Mary Fallon today, Betsy DeVos, Michelle Ray, Elaine Chow will be here, former Labor Secretary for eight years under George W. Bush, um, Korean American who didn't speak English when she got to this country. So those are just off the top of my head with no notes. Um, it's a been, a, it's been um, dozens and dozens of people who represent all walks of life, both political parties, both genders different sexual orientations, religions, backgrounds, races, and ethnicities. It's been quite exciting. Kellyanne, he's going to uh, Florida tomorrow or Wednesday. When yes. is he returning uh, to New York? And actually, do we expect any announcements on appointments prior to Thanksgiving? So he is going tomorrow to have Thanksgiving with his family, and he'll, it's yet to be determined when he'll return. A lot of going on here, a lot going on there. Uh, and then his appointments will come out when he's ready, and not a moment sooner, because it's a, these are big decisions and they shouldn't be rushed. We're weeks and weeks and weeks ahead of President Carter, President Reagan, even President Obama had it made most of his appointments, you know, by this point, naturally. Nor should he be expected to. I don't think that I don't think so. I don't know. To be determined. None are scheduled now. Kellyanne, the president has met the president elect has met with a number of billionaires. Um, can you talk about his relationship to his fellow billionaires and sort of whether he sees their wealth as, a, as an asset to be uh, to use in the White House, or is that something of a hindrance in terms of relating to common folks the folks that live in office? It's not a hindrance at all. I mean, obviously, he's the guy who connected with America. He's the guy who gave voice and visibility to the forgotten man or forgotten woman during this election. I think a lot of folks missed the electorate, missed real America, and he he attracted them, he animated them, and I would be president to them and all of America. At the same time, he's a successful businessman and billionaire in his own right, so he understands what American success stories look like, what successful job creators bring to the table, and he's happy to take their counsel as well. We've had people from all different socioeconomic backgrounds here speaking with him. That was very typical on the campaign trail for him, very typical in his life before he ran for president, and it will continue to be the case as he's president. I mean, because he's just somebody who talks to many people in a given day. In, the, in this case, it's in a more official capacity. What specific assets does he think the billionaires in specific bring to the team? They know how to create jobs. They understand that they understand the value of pursuing the American dream. And those folks, I'm sure, are very talented, but also got lucky at some point. And it's a combination of the two. And they're, they're folks who also understand tax policy, by and large, regulatory policy, trade. All the issues, immigration, all the issues that he really brought up from the fore. I mean, you look at trade and immigration in the past, these are two and three percent issues that he brought up, bubbled up to the fore. And he ran on them till the very last moment when he was in 
Grand Rapids, Michigan, in that final rally in the wee hours of election day, you're still talking about those same issues. I think whether you're a billionaire or whether you're someone who thinks you've been treated unfairly because your job has been shipped to Mexico or China, you're, re you're relating to the Donald Trump message in, in large degree. But thanks for sharing your bosses with us today to the networks and the cable stations. And uh, that's will be back. Absolutely, yes, he will. Tomorrow he'll be with the New York Times. And uh, as those invitations come through, we'll be going through them and, and absolutely sorting them out and scheduling them. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. The mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio, gave a speech today saying that they'll, the city will be standing up for all New Yorkers, anyone who is fearful, and also saying that they'll refuse to... Fearful, of, fearful of the jobs he's killed or fearful of what? Fearful of the bike lanes? What? I think fearful of anti-Semitic graffiti that's cropped up in the city, fearful of the idea of a Muslim registry, saying that they would not enact, let's say, an expansion of stop and frisk. Even Are you aware of what was, Mr. Trump has said many times about the Muslim registry? Tell us what he said about the Muslim oh, registry. Look it up. He said it many times in the campaign show. You have to be fair, and well, you have to be complete website, in your coverage. Website, you have to be fair, and you have to be complete in the coverage. On his, on his website, Anyone he else? still has his policy to ban all Muslims from Thank entering you. the United States. Anything else? Thank you.